Cars like the excellent Ford Mustang Mach-E are helping to move buyers towards electric vehicles. This one in particular will appeal to the go-fast crowd. More than just a different face, the GT is tweaked to attract enthusiasts. The standard mach are great fun. This one ups the power and cornering talent. It has everything Mustang fans love, except for the symphony of a V8 and two extra doors. A base rear drive Mach-E with the 70 kilowatt hour standard lithium ion battery pack starts at around $48,000 before tax credits. The extra 23 grand for the GT buys the 91 kilowatt hour extended range pack mounted low in the floor. Then there's E all wheel drive. The dual motor setup delivers 480 horsepower and 600 pound feet of instant torque. The performance model would add 34 pound-feet. The suspension is sport-tuned, that means firmer. GT's cabin is a better place to spend time. The noticeably improved materials like synthetic suede and aluminum are reason alone to upgrade from even the premium model Mach-E. The startup tone is a subtle cue. Like most EVs, there's a drive selector, but no transmission. The aggressiveness of the regenerative braking can be set for those who do or don't like one-pedal driving. The tires get more grip, wheels grow to 20 inches, and if you look inside them, you'll see upgraded brakes, Brembo's up front, because sometimes performance means better stopping, right? Drive modes make a big difference here. Unbridled is the most aggressive setting in most mach -E's. The GT and GT Performance turn it up to 11 with Unbridled Extend, essentially a track mode that relaxes traction and stability control, reduces regen, and optimizes the battery's thermal management. To turn off all the nannies, push the button on the far right here, but wise drivers understand that 600 pound-feet of torque can get you into real trouble real fast without them. The GT is quicker than the standard Mustang Mach-E all-wheel drive. Zero to 60 happens in 3.8 seconds with this one. That's about a second quicker, and 3.8? That's Mustang Mach-1 territory. Man, it really pushes you into the back of the seats, and there's no sound. It kind of takes a second to get used to that dynamic. To protect the drivetrain, GT is limited to five seconds of full throttle acceleration. That could be an issue on the track. On public roads, it would mean closing in on 100 miles an hour. In the right drive mode, it's easy to kick the tail out for a rear drive bias dynamic. 600 pound-feet of torque is something to behold. One thing about electric vehicles, instant power. <laughs> uh, it's really fun. No sound, but lots of power. This is a true driver's car with steering weight that's not too light or too heavy. The only two EVs I've had more fun in are Porsche's Taycan Turbo and a first-generation Tesla Roadster, and those are pretty much made of unobtainium for most of us. The performance is up there with my favorite gas-drinking cars. Uh, yes, that means a Mustang GT Coupe, but Mach-E does ride a bit higher, so there's that. It's always hard to capture sounds in a car, but here's the propulsion sound of the Mach-E. Don't know if that translates or whether you can hear it, but it is subtle. With the weighty pack in the floor, the center of gravity is as low as a villain's intentions, and the GT's performance suspension lowers the Mach-E by 10 millimeters. This might be sold as an SUV crossover of sorts, but it's not meant for off-roading. Mach-E, being an electric car, is very quiet, but since there is no engine sound to mask anything, you do hear different noises, like if you hit a bump, there's kind of a drum-like thong when you hit bumps. That happens in a regular car. It's just more noticeable in an EV. One advantage to the silent running is being able to hear when the tires are reaching their limits in hard cornering. Powering through the turns, the GT's solid structure stays flat. There's little to no body roll. The brake pedal feel when transitioning from regeneration to the physical disc brakes is pretty much seamless. G 
GT stops right now and gets back to speed right now too. The GT sport suspension and performance tires do make a difference. This handles noticeably better, but it does feel heavy because, well, the Mach-E is. The GT weighs nearly 5,000 pounds, batteries are heavy, and the firmer suspension is felt on rough or choppy pavement. The GT bucks passengers around a bit. It's not a deal breaker, but pay attention on the test drive. The display by the wheel is small, but at least there's one in front of the driver. In the past, I've been able to meet the EPA-rated range of the Mustang mach -E's that I've driven. This one is rated at 270 miles, but it's cold out. This morning, it was in the high 30s, right now the low 40s, and temperature affects all electric cars. So I'm guessing I'm going to see 210, 215 here. Much of my driving was on the highway, where EVs are less efficient. Standard Ford Copilot 360 2.0 has active electronic safety features like automatic emergency braking, blind spot warning, reverse braking assist, and lane keeping. Upgrade to the $1,900 Copilot 360 Active 2.0 tech, and it adds an automated parking system plus Blue Cruise, an extremely good hands-free highway driving system. A quick word about Blue Cruise, which is Ford's semi-autonomous driving system similar to GM's Super Cruise. Now, it has a camera that makes sure that you're paying attention, and it only operates on mapped highways. But I've been driving along, actually riding, for the last five minutes, hands off the wheel, and it's very secure. Good stuff. Mach-E's can juice up using 150 kilowatt DC fast chargers. Using one, this pack should go from 10 to 80% in around 45 minutes, or for a quick top off, 50 miles in some 10 minutes. At home, using 240 volt level two, a full fill takes around 14 hours, like range, EV charge time depends on temperature and how spent the pack is. So those numbers are squishy. I firmly believe for the best EV ownership experience, you really need to be able to charge at home. Some 80 to 85% of it is done there. For one thing, it's a lot more convenient to juice up while you're sleeping, and it's much less expensive than public charging. Now for traveling, the infrastructure is of course very important. Tesla has the single largest network, but Ford has something interesting called the Blue Oval Network, which takes a whole bunch of popular networks, like ChargePoint and Electrify America, and effectively treats them as one. You plug and charge. You don't need a separate account or a credit card. You get one bill at the end of the month from Ford, no matter how many networks you use. It's really pretty cool. Now, to find this station, I use the Ford Pass app. It's for iPhone and Android. It does all sorts of things. You can remotely lock or start the car in the morning when it's plugged in so you can precondition the cabin using the power from your house, not the battery. That gives you more range. Also, you can make it phone as key. I don't have a fob on me. I'm only using my phone. Left the fob at home. Dead phone, use a code to open the car and a separate one in the car to start it. By placing the battery pack flat in the chassis, engineers gave Mach-E a roomy interior, though it's taken up by a traditional type of center console. There's loads of space for convenience. There are no button blanks. Those can give a car a budget look. The shape of the top panel is a nod to the Mustang Coupe's dual cockpit look. The fabric is like a sound bar you might have for your TV. GT's standard Bang & Olufsen system is loud, punchy, and accurate. Copper accents are a GT exclusive. Like them or not, this is a much better cabin experience than other Mach-E's, right down to the heated seats. Covered in ActiveX material with grippy Miko inserts, nearly everyone that sat in them commented on their comfort. The wheel is hefty and heated. This enormous tablet runs Ford's Sync 4 user interface, which is great. Uh, don't like the giant iPad look? Well, I can't help you there, other than to say response is very good and it's well laid out and easy to navigate. Leave your phone on the charge pad. Standard wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are energy vampires. 
I'm five foot nine and have enough head, knee, and leg room for comfort. Foot room is a little tight. At least the floor is perfectly flat. No separate climate zone back here, but people can charge phones. Three adults will be snug, two will be comfy. The load floor has room underneath for hiding small things near the charge cord storage slot, or drop the panel all the way down for max cargo room. Uh, notice that there's no spare tire, just a repair kit. The privacy shade is light, foldable, and easy to stash away. Small helpful touches are here, but no remote releases. With the backs up, it's 26.6 cubic feet. Dropped, there's a solid 55 cubes, so Maki is useful, and yes, it does have a frunk. 4.7 cubic feet is enough for a carry-on suitcase. More and more electric vehicles keep popping up. They just keep getting better and better. The Kia EV6 GT is quite the competitor to this Ford. The Mach-E GT is great fun, adding to the engaging goodness the standard Mach-E offers. For EV Universe, I'm Tom Volk.